Joined by Jake Cronenworth. Jake, you're kicking off the 2023 Q&A series, so thanks for doing this. It's a long time coming, and what better time to do it than after you sign a new seven-year contract with the Padres? Now, you are a fairly unemotional dude, all right? <laughs> a fairly calm guy. What does emotional Jake look like when you find out this news? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a culmination of everything that everybody works for. I mean, obviously main goal is to win the World Series, but um, to get security and be here for the next technically eight years, including this year, um, it's pretty special. I think you always have to have, believe in yourself, right, and have faith that you're going to get there. But when you were with Tampa, when you kind of weren't sure where you were going to land, did you ever think, or even when you when you came on with the Padres, that this might be possible for you? You always like to hope, yes. um, but you never know until it becomes a realization. Uh, but yeah, I think it goes back to the hard work and everything, and you know, trying to become the best player you can each year, um, no matter what point you're at in the season. Um, you always have belief in yourself uh, to be the best, um, and to be rewarded with that uh, is pretty awesome. Did you were talks going on for a while? Uh, just probably the last month or so. So, do you, and it, there was a hope that it would get done before opening day. Like, yes. okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it never was really talked about, but yeah. um, you always like to hope, so that nothing kind of carries on throughout the season. All right, who did you call first? Uh, I called my dad first. And how was his reaction? Uh, yeah, he couldn't talk, so uh, <laughs> good. He was happy. Um, they were all here for opening weekend, so that was pretty special for them. That was really cool. What is your first big purchase? Do you think that, what, what, what do you think that will be? I don't know. I don't own a house. I don't own a car, so I gotta buy a couple things. You don't own a house or a car? So. I've been driving the same car for like seven years, so um, it's my dad's old car that I still have. And you have it here, or what kind of car is it? Like a. It's just a old Mercedes. Nice. Okay, so you could possibly get yourself a car, get yourself a house, like sky's the limit right now, as Manny said. I think so. There's only one way, and it's up. That is amazing. Do you like San Diego where, um, I mean, I know you like San Diego, but like how much have you embraced kind of San Diego living? Because you're from Michigan, you live in Chicago in the off season, right? So very kind of East Coast and cold weather, but what, what do you think of this whole West Coast vibe? I like it. Yeah, um, yeah we'll see. I may stay here for the off season now, but um, that's yet, I still gotta buy a house. <laughs> you know that there is uh, an agent out there that really- There's an uh, agent out there. I, and I know she wants my business. <laughs> We're going to get to a little more of that later. Um, St. Clair, Michigan. Okay, I looked it up. Population 5,500. What was it like growing up there? I mean, can you describe this this small town and, and what the culture was like there? Yeah, a uh, small town on the St. Clair River connecting Lake Huron to Lake St. Clair. Um, everybody knows everybody. Um, playing the same Little League team, the same guys all the way through high school, play hockey, baseball, everything together. Um, so it's one of those uh, just small Midwest uh, towns. Is there Starbucks? No. Is there, like, like what, what, what is there? Like anything that is, where, yeah, how far do you have to drive to like get to, I guess, Target or something? Um, I don't know where there's a Target. Probably like 15 minutes away, 20 minutes away. So it's like mom and pop. Like you got like stuff around there that's okay. Yeah. There's a field named after your grandma, right? A baseball field? Uh, there's a bench at the field. Okay, there's a bench at the field named after your grandma because she was also very influential in raising you in the baseball community. Are they going to build a statue after you now? Like, I mean, what are they going to do for you? Not after me. Um, she probably had more influence on the Little League than I did. Uh, so. well, they've got to be excited for, for you to come out of there and be having the success. Yeah, um, it seems like ever since I was in Little League and left high school, there's been kids going to play college and um, seems like every year, guy in the NHL, you know, for some reason this little town's produced some pretty good athletes. That's pretty cool. Do you know there's a Jake from St. Clair Facebook page? Do you ever peruse that? I don't have Facebook, but I, I know about it. <laughs> it's like a little tribute to you, which is very, 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 very nice. Okay, your Michigan days. Um, I love this. When I look up your name for Michigan, the best headline is Jacob Cronenworth is Michigan's Mr. Everything. In four Big Ten tournament games, you had four saves while hitting 389 with three RBI. You had the most played appearances. You would literally what? Like you'd play eight innings and then you'd go get the save in the ninth? 
Uh, yeah, I think I threw seven and a third or seven and two thirds. So I, the first game I threw one inning. The second game I think I threw an inning and two thirds. Um, but you also be playing at the same time, right? Like second base and hitting and yep, hitting lead off. Um, I think the third game I threw like seven and a, or one and a third, and then the last game I threw one inning. How special were those days for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, my friends that I have now that I'm the closest with are guys that I played with in college, and, um, and we talk all the time. We all live next to each other in the off season, um, so I get to see them, and they come out here, which is great. Now, I've I know you've told Matt Carpenter that you can still pitch. Can you still pitch, Jake? Do we work on this in the off season? No, but no, I don't work on it. But yes, I can. What was like your go-to pitch? Like, what, what what was your specialty? Like your bread and butter? Uh, I don't know. Now it would probably be different than what I was doing before, just with all the new technology and everything. So I don't know. Like you could. There's still time to find out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Speaking of. When you came to the Padres, it's, it's, it's funny to think about now because you're so ingrained with this team, um, but you were kind of anonymous. You were the throw-in guy with the Tommy Pham trade, right? Like, no one really knew what your role was gonna be, maybe the first two-way player when that was a thing. And then you, no one wants a pandemic or for someone to get hurt, but like, that year really was so beneficial for you in the sense that you were able to work with the coaches before baseball started. And then when Eric Cosmer wasn't able to play, you just went in there and, and like that was it, like full steam ahead after that. Do you ever think about just how life-changing that, that series of, event, of events was for you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's honestly pretty, it is insane because, you know, there's plenty of guys that get the same opportunity and who knows if I don't get a hit in that first pinch hit at bat or I don't play as well in the field the first couple games. Um, might not be here today. So uh, it's one of those things, just try to take advantage of every opportunity you have and uh, just make the most of it. I don't know if you've seen in that tunnel where they've put up pictures of like big moments for the Padres, you know, everything from Tony Gwynn to, you know, last year's playoffs. You've got your picture there with the Dragon Slayer move. Is it kind of cool to be just part of that history now with this team? Yeah. Um, now that I've seen pictures and what they're doing around the park and around the city, um, kind of starting to realize what it meant to the team and franchise and the community and everything. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Whenever I talk to players or coaches about you, and this goes back to like your first All-Star game too with um, Dave Roberts and Bud Black, they always say you do things the right way. Like they really appreciate how you go about things. What does that mean to you in the sense of like, what does that entail? What is doing things the right way? What do you think that they're all talking about there? Um, I, I would like to think it's just how I play the game. Um, no matter if I'm struggling or on the hottest streak I've ever been on, um, always going to be the same player. Trying to take the extra base, playing hard on defense, um, having good at bats, even if I'm not having success, um, and putting in the work every day. I said unemotional earlier, but I don't think that's right. I think you're just calm. Cause you know, you are emotional in, in big moments, but like, do you ever get mad at anyone? Like, do you ever yell? Like, do you ever, like what's your- Myself. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm probably harder on myself than anybody is. So, um, which is good. You know, I'm competitive and I want to be the best. So um, it's pretty hard not to be hard on yourself. What would be like your passionate Jake moment? Like if someone saw it, like would it be at like a hockey game or like, I don't know, like do you ever just get like super? Um, probably at a Michigan football game. Okay. Out, outside of baseball. Jake and Jacob. Let's let's go there for a second. Um, let's just clear it up first. You're not asking anyone to call you Jacob. Jake Cronenworth is, is just fine with you. But you were never called Jake until you got to the big leagues, right? Until I got drafted, yeah. So you got drafted, sorry. And, and, and then suddenly your name shows up in baseball reference and everywhere else is Jake and not Jacob. Everybody started calling me Jake uh, eight years ago. So it's kind of I'm Jake now, which is, which is completely fine. So. But your friends and your family will call you Jacob. Or the, the guys in the clubhouse, like I had a few um, people after that all came out say to me, uh, some wives, they went and they asked their, their husbands, who are your teammates, and their husbands confirmed, yeah, we call him Jacob, you know? So it's more like the close people close to you and everybody like that. Yeah, for the most part. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> they could just pick one or the other. They pick Jake or Jacob, it doesn't matter, um, but yeah. I think that's cool. Now, did you ever think to like tell, I don't know who you would tell, but like. Yeah, I, mean, I just left it as is, so. Was, you're like worried about making a team and things like that. You're not like. better. <laughs> well, you do like Jake the Rake. Yeah, it was 
much more room for nicknames and everything. So. I'll tell you though, Jacob John, like Jacob John Cronenworth, is that's pretty fire. Like that's it's kind of nice. Or JJ, did anyone ever call you JJ? No. <laughs> what about like Jakey? No. Or Jake. Just Jake or Jacob. Okay, I gotta tell you, we were the ones that talked about that in spring training and when that um, tweet came out, which I thought was gonna be like, a few hundred people would think it was kind of cute or whatever, so kind of funny, you know? That thing took off. That thing got more than half a million views, probably one of the biggest tweets that I've ever done. I had no idea how much that was gonna take off. Like, it, it, and it just kind of showed me, like, you have so many fans, like, you have so many people. You are not this anonymous guy anymore. Like, people just absolutely love you. Have you felt that in the last year or two? Yeah, I think ever since we've, in 21, since we've had fans at the stadium, obviously didn't really feel much of it in 20 because no fans, but um, since then it's been awesome. Um, never would have imagined it, but uh, we're here now, it's great. Okay, this is a Jacob After Dark question. Probably not gonna make the newspaper. Uh, you have a lot of fans, but you have a lot of lady fans, my friend. You got a lot of girls, that, a lot of ladies that are crushing on you that would like a so-called trip into the crone zone. Is this flattering? Do your friends give you a hard time about this? Because I know people have to notice this. No, not really, they don't. None of them really do. Um, my friends are pretty normal, which is great, so they, they just treat me like their friends. They're not uh, looking out for whatever's dating show that we need to put you on or anything like that? No, okay, you'd like me to move on from this, right? Yes. <laughs> coffee, what's your go-to coffee order? Uh, yeah, just a cold brew. Regular cold brew, yeah. In the summer, yeah, and then hot in the winter. Hey, Matt Carpenter, um, I asked him about you and he said that you and Trent Grisham the messiest locker mates he's ever had. Do, do you agree or disagree? Uh, I disagree. Trent is messy. I'm not messy. I just keep things on my chair. But it's my chair, so I can put whatever I want on it. So Trent needs to work, not you. Yes. Okay. All right, what's your comfort night? Like, say you have a really long day. What are you listening to? What are you watching? And what are you eating or drinking? Just go home and, I don't know, right now I'm watching The Night Agent on Netflix, so. Um, just put that on and maybe play some video games too. What's your video game of choice? Uh, Call of Duty right now. Um, but now, since we're going on the road, probably play some Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. Does, do you play any of the guys in the, in the clubhouse? No, I don't. No. no. Why? I don't know. I, I don't know. We just never have. Favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, cookies and cream. Yes. Uh, best off day spot? Um... I don't know. My apartment? Just chilling? <laughs> yeah. Um, if you were to play hockey again, um, which you, you were good at hockey, right? You liked hockey? I thought I was pretty good. Um, who, which one of your teammates would be able to be good, like tough enough and like, you know, be able to like handle hockey? Like who would you be like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll help this guy get up to speed? Probably Nick Martinez. Nick Martinez would be, that's a good answer. Hockey player, if he knew how to skate. But I talked to him, he doesn't really know how to skate very well. Well, he actually does know how to skate, but not, he could, Nick would be a great hockey player. I agree with you on this. And he would Red Bull it up enough where he doesn't feel anything anyways, and he'd go for it. Your favorite band of the past? Um, Van Halen or Motley Crue. Are you still, are you like, if you put on music, are you old school or new school now? Like, will you, what, what's your mix like? I listen to a lot of old school rap. School rap is awesome. Jacob Cronenworth, Jacob John, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. And congratulations on the new contract.